Well, let's see if we can uh, prove the derivatives of sine and cosine. So to do that, uh, we're going to need to know five things. And uh, you already know them, but we're going to have to keep track of them. So the first one is we're at some point going to need the sum formula for sine. So we need to know sine of a plus b. Uh, but we know that that's sine a cosine b plus cosine a and sine b. Um, we are also going to need to know cosine of a plus b at some point. So that's going to be... Uh, cosine a, cosine b, and then minus sine a, sine b. Okay, there are two important trig limits that we're going to need to know, and hopefully you've explored them at some point, uh, probably graphically is the easiest way to do it. Uh, the first one is that the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h is equal to 1, so that's going to be important. And then the other one is the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h is equal to 0. So if you... Um, just graph sine of x over x, you'll see that as x approaches 0, uh, clearly you're getting 1. And uh, similarly, if you graph cosine of x minus 1 all over x, uh, as you approach 0, or as x approaches 0, you definitely get 0. So you can see that from the graphs. Um, and then the final thing that we're going to need to remember, obviously, is that the derivative of a function is going to be uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, so that's the stuff we know, uh, and now let's uh, get a proof of the derivative of sine of x. So, we want uh, d dx, the derivative with respect to x, of sine of x. So that's going to be, by the limit definition, limit as h approaches 0, of sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h, which is the limit as h approaches 0. Now I'm going to use the sum formula on sine of x plus h. So that's going to be sine of x cosine of h plus cosine of x and sine of h, and then uh, fill in the rest. So that was uh, sine of x plus h, now minus sine of x, and then all over h. All right, the next step is I'm going to uh, break this up into two limits. And remember, I'm only allowed to do that if each of the limits exists, but it turns out they will. So uh, I'm doing sine of x, cosine of h, minus sine of x, all over h, plus the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of x, sine of h, over h. So why did I break it up that way? Because it's going to work out. Um, so if you look, uh, combine those two fractions, you get back to the original fraction. So I haven't broken any rules yet. Uh, now, look at both of those limits. You'll notice that they're both uh, limits that involve h. So sine of x for the first limit on the left there is actually a constant, so I can factor it out. And then for the second limit, cosine of x, because it doesn't involve h, is a constant, so I can factor it out. So I'm going to do that. So I get sine of x. And then I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 all over h plus cosine of x, limit as h approaches 0, sine of h over h. Okay, so you see um, both of the famous limits have shown up. So this is going to be sine of x. Um, this limit right here, uh, limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h, we know it's famous and we know it's 0, plus cosine of x, and then the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h, famous, that's 1. Um, so overall, this becomes cosine of x. So the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and we've proved it, so it's definitely true. Uh, and then let's do the proof of the derivative of cosine. So it's almost exactly the same thing. So we're going to start off with the limit definition. So cosine of x plus h minus cosine of x all over h. Um, same idea here, limit is h approaches 0. Use the sum formula for cosine of x plus h. So cosine x, cosine h minus sine x sine h, and then uh, finish, so minus cosine of x, and then all over h. And uh, again, we're going to uh, kind of rearrange the numerator and break this into two different limits. So the limit is h approaches 0, cosine x, cosine h, minus cosine of x, all over h, and then minus, limit is h approaches 0, of sine x sine h over h. Okay, so the, the minus sign is just because there are minus signs hanging around. Um, and do the same thing here. So neither of those limits depends upon x, so I can factor out anything that has an x. So cosine x, and then the limit is h approaches 0 of a famous limit. Um, and then minus sine of x and a famous limit. So we know these things. So knowing those five things at the beginning uh, allows us to do this. Uh, so it's cosine of x famous limit that is 0, and then minus sine of x, a famous limit 
that is 1. So overall, we're left with just negative sine of x. So the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So that's the derivative of sine and cosine. Um, we need to know five things to do it, but we already know them, so that's good. Hope you found this helpful. Good luck.